I would love to hear your thoughts on hydrotain, Dr. Shaddix. Reducing water by 50%. Alan had a demonstration on his on a, redu- a demonstration of the product absorbing water in the atmosphere. So there is very, very little information in the scientific literature on hydrotain or any humectant. Very little. The, the only one that I'm aware of is a, is a dissertation from Clemson that was partially published in a European conference. I'm sure there's probably something else somewhere else. But I can't find much at all on hydrotain. I did a little work with hydrotain in the early 2000s. I didn't see anything happen positively or negatively. Um, but I didn't publish that. So what I want to do is I want to pull up this one article and I am going to read this article because it's so small it'll never fit into any of my normal my normal show stuff that I do. And this paper is entitled Effect of a Humectant in Two Wetting Agents on Soil Moisture Content and Hydrophobicity of Creeping Bent Grass and Bermuda Grass Putting Greens and Sport Pitches by Pert McCarty, Landry, Quisenberry, Bridges, and Cross. Now, if I'm I'm pretty sure this was pulled from one of Bert's students' uh, master's thesis or PhD dissertation. I don't know which, but it's a very, very short uh, present uh, uh, blurb, I guess. You can see it's only one and a half pages. Okay, so I'm going to let me fix this real quick. This is going to drive me nuts. If I can. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to read this because this is the only time I'm ever going to go over this paper. This is not a very high quality journal. It's not even really a journal, I don't think. It's in the it was in the European Turfgrass Conference in 2014 where this was presented. Okay. But it's all we got. So a humectant, which is hydrotain, is a substance which can which can attract, retain, and retain moisture from the air, thus promoting soil moisture retention. Okay. The Hydrotain ES Plus product label suggests watering can be reduced by 50% following mixing soil with the humectant from attracting moisture from humid air. These have been used throughout Germany as a possible approach to water conservation on golf courses and sport pitches due to irrigation restrictions. Wetting agents are commonly applied to alleviate moisture stress as they reduce the surface tension of liquids and therefore soil hydrophobicity. The objectives of, of this research were to evaluate a commercial humectant in a commercial wetting agent. The, wet, the humectant was Hydrotain Ebis Plus, and the wetting agent was Cascade Plus under two irrigation regimes, light and infrequent, or deep and infrequent on creeping bent grass putting greens. The number two objective was to investigate the effects of Hydrotain, Cascade Plus, Primer Select, and Primer, Primer Select Plus fungicide, Flutonil, Flutolanil, I don't know all these fungicides, for control of fairy ring and localized dry spots on tiff eagle Bermuda grass. The third one was to evaluate the effect of hydrotain, Cascade Plus, and Primer Select on soil moisture retention on a non irrigated com- common Bermuda grass. So, on uh, sport pitch, that would be sport turf. So, that would be the, the idea there is that there's, it's not irrigated. So, if this product actually absorbs moisture from the air, you probably wouldn't see much of an effect if it's being constantly irrigated. But if it's not being irrigated, then it might have an opportunity to present itself as a positive, positive product, positive effect. And number four, to evaluate soil moisture retention in a soil humectant, or a soil humectant mixture following exposure to low and high relative humidity. Okay, so I'm going to read through the materials and methods real quick, and it's literally one page and we're done. So the materials and methods on number one, the humectant hydrotain and the wetting agent Cascade Plus were applied in 374 liters of water per hectare. To, creeping, to L93 creeping bent grass putting green, hydrotain was applied only once, but Cascade Plus was applied as two sequential applications according to the product label. Two irrigation regimes were evaluated for each product similarly to FU and Dernoidin Der, 2009, namely deep and infrequent or uh, uh, deep and infrequent with 13 millimeters of water at first visual sign of wilt and light and infrequent with daily ET replacement. Daily ET levels were determined using an on-site weather station. That was number. That was study number one. Number two, Hydrotain Cascade Plus, Primer Select, and Primer Select Plus Flutonil were applied similarly as stated above. The combination treatment of Primer Select and Flutolanil 
was included as flutonil as a fungicide used to control fairy ring. Applications following Karcher in 2008, fairy ring was presented at the beginning of the study and plots were arranged such that each plot contained an equal portion of, visual, of visible symptoms. All treatments were irrigated after application with a half an inch of water and mowing was avoided with, for 24 hours. Fairy ring and localized dry spot intensities were quantified with liner sex. Okay, number three, the effect of hydrogen cascade plus and primer select on soil moisture retention was evaluated on non-irrigated common Bermuda grass sport pitch maintained on Tocoa a soil type. Treatments were applied similarly as previously described and immediately prior to predicted rainfall events, so, and then they measured soil volumetric water content. And number four, 30 milliliters of hydrogen pl cascade plus or deionized water or tap water were mixed with 100 grams of ground, dry, homogenized, 50% sand, 50% clay with a bulk density of 0.19 grams per cubic centimeters and a total porosity of 0.3, blah, blah, blah. Jars were then placed under two relative humidity levels, 40 and 80% to determine uh, moisture fluctuations as reflected by volumetric content, water content over seven days. All field studies included visual turf quality ratings every seven days through each, throughout each study. They did water droplet penetration tests and all sorts of stuff. Okay, now the results. And we only have a little bit, there's literally like three, three or four paragraphs and we're done. So basically they're measuring the effect of hydrotain under four different studies. Okay. They're measuring the turf quality with not only bent grass, but with, with, with Bermuda grass, they're measuring volumetric water content. It was moisture retention. They're doing it under dry conditions. They're doing it under wet conditions. They're doing it under light and infrequent, heavy and inf heavy and infrequent, light and frequent. They're all doing all sorts of stuff, trying to manipulate the moisture to see under which condition a product like a humectant or hydrotain might actually have a beneficial effect. Okay. The results, the study number one, 14 days after treatment with hydrotain and one week after the second treatment with cascade plus soil moisture in the top five cent, 5.7 centimeters of plots received light and infrequent. Oh, sorry. Light and frequent irrigation <clears throat> was highest following cascade plus applications. Table one, soil moisture levels of hydrotain treated plots were similar to the untreated. Okay. Right here. Should have highlighted that right here. Soil moisture hydrogen were similar to the untreated. 30, so there's no difference between the, uh, soil, the hydrogen and the untreated. 35 days after treatment, the untreated control had the highest soil moisture, 28, compared to 10% from cascade and hydrogen treated plots. So let's just go down here and look at treat, uh, a table one. This is what they're talking about right here. Non-treated and the humectant. So the non-treated is all these, all these here. Let me turn that to a different color. And then you'll see the effect of the humectant at the 14 days. There's no difference. There's a B right here. There's no difference between applying the hydrotain and not applying anything at all at two weeks after application. But Cascade Plus, you did see an increase in the volumetric soil moisture content from 11 to 30% under the light and frequent application regime. Okay. That's the only time that you see any of these actually show an increase in volumetric con water content was from Cascade Plus two weeks after application. Nowhere in this particular table did hydrotain result in an increase in soil moisture content compared to not applying anything at all under, that, under the first study. Okay. Now, the second study on Bermuda grass, the highest infiltration rate was found on plots treated with Primer Select, which was the wetting agent, compared to, okay, then go through there, um, compared to, no, uh, on, let's see, compared to six centimeters per hour on the non-treated plots or plots treated with hydrotain and Cascade Plus Table 2. So let's just read Table 2. It's just easier that way. So here is we're looking at the non-treated uh, turf, okay? And right below that, when it says humectant, that's hydrotain. The infiltration rate was no different when you use hydrotain or when you use the non-treated. It was the exact same. Okay. Now, but you did see an increase in the infiltration rate when you use one of the wetting agents, primer select or primer with flutolanil. You saw an increase relative to the control. The control was five centimeters an hour. With primer select and primer with flutonil, it was 11 and, and almost nine centimeters per hour. So almost doubling the infiltration rate using wetting agents but you didn't change anything using the hydrotain. Volumetric water content with the non-treated turf was 10.6%, and with the hydrotain, it was 10.1%, no difference. But with one of the wetting agents, Cascade Plus, you saw an increase. Oh, no, I'm, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. With, uh, not with Cascade Plus. 
with primer select and with primer plus flutonil, you saw the increase from 10% to 18 and 20%. So this column right here is what you would expect to see different if hydrotain was actually doing what it claims to do. The volumetric co water content, which is the moisture content of the soil, which is what hydrotain claims to be able to absorb out of the, out of the air, you'd be increasing the moisture content, pulling it out of the air. We're not seeing any of that in, uh, in the tree in the study number one or in study number two the volumetric water content is identical no difference okay we go to objective number three treatments did not influence the soil volumetric water content of the non-irrigated premier grass sports turf pitch on a native soil data not shown so they didn't even show the data on the set on the third study because none of the treatments affected the volumetric water content. So that's three strikes on hydrotain on volumetric water content compared to not applying the product at all. Objective number four, the volumetric water content was higher after addition of Cascade Plus, which was a 20% increase, but was not influenced by hydrotain table three. So here you go again, over here on this table, deionized water and tap water. So let's just say tap water. Tap water, the volumetric water content was 18.2. 18, 18 With hydrotain, it was 18.5, no difference. But when you used Cascade Plus, the volumetric water content went up to 20, a statistical increase. So the conclusions are, overall, adding hydrotain did not consistently increase soil moisture retention or improve turf grass quality. Wetting agents lowered low, uh, localized dry spot occurrence and mitigated fairy ring symptoms. Both wetting agents increased soil vet, vo, vo, volumetric water content and decreased localized dry, spec, dry spots, while Primer Select also uh, in, increased soil water infiltration rate. Previous reports indicate excessive rates of moisture absorbers are necessary for soil moisture retention benefits, often leading to undesirable and uneven surfaces. So. The conclusions are <laughs> four strikes and you're out. So again, until there's confirming evidence, I wouldn't be convinced. And now, not only do you have to provide confirming evidence, you have to f provide more compelling evidence than the evidence that's already been published because the evidence that's been published is showing that it's really not providing any benefit to turf quality or volumetric water content at all compared to doing nothing. So now the hill to climb is greater because the refuting evidence is greater.